Welcome to today's webinar, courtesy of the Kentucky Small Business Development Center, right here in Louisville. We're all about hooking you up with free, super secret business coaching and training services. It doesn't matter if you're just dipping your toes in or gearing up for a big expansion. We've got the goods, the tools, and the know-how to help you win. To get the scoop, cruise on over to LouisvilleSmallBusiness.com or hit us up at 502-977-5800. Big thanks for tuning in to today's webinar. Feel free to drop your questions or chat it up with our speaker using the chat feature. Let's dive in. Hey, welcome, friends. Uh, thanks for joining us on a Tuesday. I'm Dave Atkin. I'm the director here at the Louisville Small Business Development Center. I'm joined with uh, my cohort uh, and comrade, Janet Flaw. Hey, Janet. Good afternoon, everyone. And our great speaker, Kevin Norville. Hey, everybody. Um, and as always, just to make sure that uh, you can hear and see us well, because we are technologically challenged most times, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a toolbar. And if you don't, just take your cursor and hover over to the, the bottom of the screen. It should pop up. Uh, there you'll see the, the chat feature. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, just just tell us, uh, just type in the chat, say, tell us your name and where you're joining from. It's always fun for me uh, to kind of understand and where everybody's kind of joining from. It's really, really interesting. So we get people from all over the place. And we've had people all over the world. I don't know how they find this, but I'm really, really thankful for that. So... There's Dwayne. Dwayne, good to see you. It's been a while since we've chatted. We should catch up. Uh, Dwayne's in Lexington. Rosemary in Newport. Hey, hey, Ro Rosemary. Uh, Middlesbrough. Joni in Middlesbrough. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Uh, Dave. Another Lexington. Hey, Donna. Uh, J-Town in Kentucky. I was just out that way yesterday. Hebron, Kentucky. That's a cool town. Dave Sauerbach, my good friend. If you ever want to see a movie at our drive-in, he's the man. I was out there and saw Top Gun a couple weeks ago. So cool place. <clears throat> so um, as always, as we go through our, um, our session today, if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the chat and we'll get to them. Uh, either during the presentation or or afterwards, we have plenty of time for questions and comments. And um, also, I need to ask you another little favor. At the end of our presentation today, we'll have uh, a little survey popping up, and that really helps us out to figure out what um, what you guys need and what you're thinking, and how we can find resources that to, to help you. So, if you wouldn't mind taking just a few minutes to fill that that's that uh, survey out, I'd really appreciate it. So today. I have my good friend and expert, and he is uh, also with uh, the Kentucky Small Business Development Center uh, down in Lexington in the nerve center of the Small Business Development Center network, uh, Kevin Norville. But um, Kevin is our uh, resident tech genius, and um, if there's something new, Kevin drops everything so he learns the new stuff. So he's one of those kind of early adopter guys, which I really appreciate. So um, if you, unless you've been living under a rock for quite some time, you are fully aware of where uh, the conversation is going with AI and uh, the things like chat, GBT, and whether you agree with this or not, or have concerns or think it's, you know, it's, it's Skynet or Kurzweil's singularity, I, I don't know, you know, the you know, the issue, the thing that you got to really think about, I mean, it's, it's here and either you can... Uh, be run over by it, or you can understand it and see what you can do to benefit it um, and use it to your advantage. So, um, you know, this is another wave of, of change in our society and the way we do business and the way we live. And it's important to understand these things. And so um, there was no one better than I can think of that, than Kevin Norville to come in here and kind of give us uh, a place to start with, with understanding some of the AI tools that we can use in our business uh, today and and uh, learn more about that. So Kevin, I'm going to quit um, just babbling on here and just turn it over to you because I'm super interested in myself. Uh, I've been messing around with it a little bit myself and uh, I'd like to learn more. So Kevin, welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Janet. Appreciate uh, this opportunity to be with you all today and to share a little bit about what I've learned 
um, in the AI space. And um, it's always um, an enjoyable time for me to be able to share some of these tech tools and these tech innovations. Um, as, as Dave mentioned, kind of a, a bit of an early adopter, which I think is a blessing and a curse. Uh, anybody who's around me for long knows that I can't go long without talking about AI right now. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and dive in because we do have a lot to cover. I'm going to I'm going to make this um, pretty interactive with uh, with some other experts coming in. So I hope to to be able to to communicate not just my feelings on the topic, but to share with you what a lot of other people much smarter than me. Uh, think about AI and its practical use cases for businesses. And so that's really our purpose is not just to talk about technology for technology's sake, but to really talk about the business application. So let's dive in. So here we go. So today we are going to talk about the most popular uh, topic on the internet. And um, no, that is not Taylor Swift, but it comes in, uh, Taylor comes in a close second if you look at uh, the search topics or trends from the past, from November until now. And so why is November uh, specific uh, to this time frame? Well, that is because that's when ChatGPT was really announced to the public. And so ChatGPT is really the tool that kind of uh, launched all of these things that we're seeing. Um, certainly there have been AI innovations and AI in various products that we use. I mean, uh, Google Maps, for instance, is is an example of AI, um, but probably not until ChatGPT did we see the great way to really uh, interface with an artificial intelligence platform in a human language kind of way. And so that's really what brought us here today is ChatGPT. And so I show this timeline just to kind of emphasize how quickly the pace of innovation has taken place here. And so if you go back to November 30th, 2022, uh, that's the red letter day. That's when ChatGPT was officially launched, uh, made open to the public. You could actually go in and create an account and start playing around with it. Um, and I remember, uh, not to, to exaggerate, but I do remember when I saw it the first time and started seeing some of the demos and looked at it and started playing with it, I had to immediately sit down. It was one of those types of experiences where you know, you saw immediately the power that uh, that was the potential power, I should say, that was present in this particular tool. So, um, so since then, we're you know we're nine, ten months into this, which is amazing to to kind of you know put that into the the timeline. Um, but a lot of users, when they started looking at ChatGPT, um, have sort of followed somewhere along this curve, right? And so. When you first saw it, it really felt like magic, right? And you were like, oh my goodness, this is, it's able to answer all my questions. No matter what I throw at it, it can do it. Um, you know, it's a chat bot that, that behaves like a superhuman. It knows a little bit about everything or a lot about everything. Um, but then you quickly start to head down the curve and realize, okay, there's some limitations here. How does this really work? And you start to understand that it's ultimately a statistical model. It's predicting what the next word should be based upon the huge amount of data on which it was trained. Um, but those limitations, you know, once you understand them, then you can start to understand, okay, how can I use that given the limitations? How can I use that uh, to either enhance my, my personal productivity, to enhance the, the productivity of my team or my business? And so then we kind of start going back up the curve and we, we start to really get where the real value of chat GPT is. Um, but it is important to recognize when it gets things wrong. So we're not going to talk a lot about the limitations today. Instead, we're going to focus on how to use it to the best of our ability and how you can you know, make some improvements starting today in your business using ChatGPT. Now, it's important to note that ChatGPT um, is not alone in being a, a large language model chatbot. And so since uh, November, there have been other chatbots to be announced. And so I want to introduce you to a couple of these other ones, but also want to kind of share my opinion and some of the opinion of, of some people I really have learned a lot from about what they believe is sort of the pecking order of chatbots. So Rachel Woods is, is one of the people I've learned a tremendous amount from. I recommend you, you follow Rachel on LinkedIn, on TikTok. Um, she always provides a wealth of knowledge in her posts. And so this is her, her take on which is the best uh, chatbot. The last few weeks, I've been using three different chatbots on a regular basis. I'm going to tell you which ones and for what. 
So first, I still use ChatGPT the most, I pay for it, it's the best. But then for any questions that I want up-to-date information on, I go to perplexity.ai. They have a really great search experience and it shows you sources for all of the results. And then if I wanna analyze anything that's really long, let's say a PDF, a transcript, or just have a really long conversation, I'll go to Claude. I think we'll eventually get to where all of that is one model or one experience, but for now, those are my best three. So I normally uh, am in almost complete agreement with Rachel's takes on some of these things. However, I do differ slightly with her um, uh, proposition there that we're eventually going to get to just one model, because I do think we're going to have multiple models that we're going to interact with. And so I'm a little more in the camp of Justin here, who kind of talks a little bit about that misconception that we're only going to be dealing with a single AI. This is the biggest thing that's going to change in AI over the next year. Right now, everyone has the perception that we're going to talk to one singular AI. People have the perception that we're just going to go to ChatGPT or we're just going to go to Bing. But the reality is the way we interact with AI models is going to look very similar to how we interact with apps on our phone or software products in general. There are going to be AI models that are better at a certain thing than a different AI model. Your relationship and use cases with one AI is going to look very different than it is with another AI. And that's why I think it's important to start building the habit of using lots of different AI tools. Don't just use ChatGPT. Explore everything that's out there. For instance, something like Claude has a much larger context window and is better for larger documents and prompts. And soon there's going to be AI models for your specific industry. Even specific tasks that you do will have unique AI models that are perfect for that use case. But it's a misconception there's going to be one AI model that does it all. There's going to be lots of different AIs working together all in different parts of your life. I think that's that's where I kind of come down on this because it's what we're seeing already. And I think, um, you know, it's not hard. You can go and look and find different AIs that are trained in specific, um, you know, corpus of data, specific domain of knowledge. Um, it won't be long before we interact with AI at the doctor's office, for instance. There's going to be a medical AI. Now, it may not completely replace your doctor. It's probably going to augment your doctor quite a bit. Um, but there's going to be that ability to interact with your health data uh, in a way where you can talk to a chat bot about the results of your blood work um, or about the results of a medical test or a diagnosis. And so that's one example. I think there's many others. I think you're seeing industries that are already uh, developing AIs that are specific to a particular industry. Um, and so I think that's only going to continue. And I think we're going to have, as Justin kind of alluded to, AIs working with other AIs. And that's where it gets really kind of, I guess, really interesting or absolutely terrifying, depending on your perception. So as we, um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed as well, because I mentioned the pace of this innovation has happened so quickly that there's really no way to keep up unless you make this your full-time job, which no one has time for that. So Nat, I think, does a good job of sort of bringing us back down to earth saying, okay, yeah, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but what can we do to kind of, you know, at least keep us moving forward? If you're feeling overwhelmed with the amount of tech and AI tools out there, you're not alone. Hi, I'm Nat, and I specialize in AI and automations for business. This year alone, we saw more than a thousand AI tools being launched. And if you're a business owner or a freelancer, realistically, there is no way that you can test out all these tools unless reviewing tools is your job. So what I would suggest is to stick with your staple tools. So for example, ChatGPT and Claude are my top two favorites for content generation and ChatGPT in particular for making strategic decisions. Like if I had to scrap every single AI tool, I would only choose ChatGPT because it is so versatile and they're always coming up with new updates. But of course, these things change all the time and you may find that new tools are better for specific use cases. So if you're getting overwhelmed, try and choose one to three tools that you use every single day and get super good at it, as opposed to spreading yourself too thin. So that's kind of my advice that I give to business owners now um, is just, you know, start with ChatGPT. Um, and see what you can do with it. I do recommend that if you're getting serious about it, go ahead and pay the $20 a month. The investment is, is worth it uh, because you're going to get access to ChatGPT version 4, uh, which is really a head and shoulders above ChatGPT 3.5 in terms of its ability to sort of reason and put together these longer complex um, content. So, um, so again, sort of the hierarchy here, you've got ChatGPT at the top. I think most people would agree that's, that's where it is. Claude is one that not a lot of people have heard about, but it is a different type of model. A couple of people from OpenAI actually left 
uh, OpenAI to to start Anthropic, which really developed Claude. Claude is a constitutional AI, uh, which means that it is it does not receive training on on your data or your feedback, but instead it has a, a vast set of rules by which it learns. And so it's it's really good and it's free for um, uploading PDFs to have it analyze or summarize. Um, you know, you can upload multiple PDFs, for instance, even on the free plan. Um, perplexity is is one you probably uh, heard mentioned as well. There, perplexity is great for using an AI chat bot that that can in, that can access the the live internet. And what's also helpful about perplexity is it also cites its uh, sources. So when it gives you information, it will provide you a, a citation of where you can go to verify it. And then, of course, we have Bing, which Microsoft has has tried to um, really resurrect from the dead. Uh, by integrating uh, ChatGPT inside of Bing. And uh, and it's done a pretty good job. It's not as robust as, as GPT-4, even though Microsoft says that Bing integrates with GPT-4, but it does uh, a pretty decent job of actually incorporating, um, you know, GPT-4-like answers. Um, BARD is Google's AI. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Google here in a minute. Um, I think a lot of people have maybe been a little underwhelmed with Google's response so far to AI, uh, but hopefully they've got something in the works. And then Jasper.ai is another tool that uh, several businesses have told me they like to use. It was one of the first ones on the scene after ChatGPT, and they've kind of stuck with it because they're familiar with the interface. So those are several examples, but what I want to show you here with ChatGPT and specifically GPT-4 is just an example in case you've not actually played with it. So I want to show you how this works. Um, I'm going to tell GPT-4, and you can see my prompt is going in. You're a social media expert specializing in small business marketing. Design a 30-day social media campaign for my coffee shop, Kevin's Coffee, and put the results in a table. And as quickly as I type in that request, ChatGPT goes to work. And it develops for me a 30-day social media campaign for Kevin's Coffee. Um, and again, it tells me, okay, on day one, you can post this on Instagram, Instagram along with a photo of the shop. You know, welcome to Kevin's Coffee. Your daily dose of happiness starts here. But what's nice is it puts this in a format for me that I can, you know, I don't have to think a lot about what am I going to post today for my business. I can take this and actually, you know, at the first of the month, go in and create 30 days worth of content posts uh, very quickly. Um, so Chat GPT has immediately provided something of value here. It may not be complete. There may be some things here I need to tweak. I'm not going to take it. You know, I don't have a local book club meeting at my coffee shop. You know, I'm going to take that out. But it gives you a great way to brainstorm and to come up with a list of things that you could put into your social media campaign in a month. And so I think this is a great uh, a great demo, really, of how this is going to, to work. So this is um, the second example I want to use is another one with ChatGPT. Again, hopefully you've all already experimented with ChatGP in some form, but you'll notice that I'm giving it a little bit of context, very little, in fact, um, and I'll talk more about that later. Now I'm telling it it's a small business strategy expert. Give me a list of the top 25 ways in which ChatGPT can help a small business owner become more productive, organized, uh, increase sales, find new customers, and sorry, I'm getting ahead of the video, and grow their business. So again, a very basic prompt, but if I'm looking for, I want to see what are some ways that I can do this? What are some ways in which chat GPT can help me do this? And so then it goes to work and it spits out again a list. Now, I mentioned that the prompt I gave it was pretty basic. Um, prompting is, is as much of an art form as it is a science, but the more context you can give chat GPT, typically the better responses you will get. So if you are, for instance, a coffee shop, you want to give it that context in terms of when you ask it a question. You want it to think, if you will, in air quotes, um, about the problem you're, you're positioning in the context of a coffee shop. And it will do a phenomenal job with that. So the more detail you can give it in that context, in that prompt, um, which is really just the request I typed in, the better the response is that you're going to get back from, from ChatGPT. Now, if anybody's played with it for long, you know that it feels and sounds usually a little bit robotic. Um, so there's 
have been a lot of users who've really been successful at getting chat GPT in particular to sound a little more human, a little more friendly, a little more nuanced in terms of what you're saying in the email, just so it doesn't sound so formal. Um, so this is a great example here from Pete as to how he did that. It's the one line you need to finally get ChatGPT to sound like a human. I've watched so many people try to use ChatGPT to write their emails and cover letters, and it always comes out robotic and stiff. What you're looking for is that very specific mix of businessy professional while still being friendly and casual. But if you put all those words into ChatGPT, it just doesn't work. So next time, try this tone, conversational, Spartan, use less corporate jargon. Here's an example, write email to Bob, tone, conversational, Spartan, use less corporate jargon, and then add what you want to say in bullets. Current sprint is full, can't take new requests, late ads are hard, plan better next time. So I'm going to stop the video just so you can see it because he doesn't really wait at the end. Um, this is one of those areas, though, where it's it's really interesting what the results uh, are like when you just change and give it that additional context. Um, and so you can see now, you know, the email starts out, hey, Bob, hope you're doing well. Wanted to touch base regarding the current sprint and our capacity to accommodate new requests. Just wanted to give you a heads up that our sprint is already chock full at the moment. So taking on any new requests would be quite challenging for us. And then, then it goes on. And it says, you know how it goes. Late additions are always a bit tough to handle given our current workload. It's not that we don't want to help. It's just that we need to balance things out and ensure we can deliver on our commitments to avoid such situations in the future, right? Because we told Bob to, he needs to plan ahead. Um, it would be great if we could plan things better and avoid last minute additions. Uh, let's catch up soon to discuss this further and explore ways to improve our workflow and request management process. In the meantime, if you have any urgent queries or concerns, feel free to respond. Um, I heard in the comments, one of the most interesting things on this video was the comments. Someone said that they had great results using the prompt, um, respond as if Mr. Rogers were a businessman. And so I thought, well, that's a great concept, right? If I want to, to have a friendly, um, you know, helpful tone in my email, that may be another alternative to use. So, so that's something you can certainly look at as you, uh, as you look to, to figure out how you want to prompt the messaging that you get out of ChatGPT. I'll go ahead and finish up the video here. This is what you get. So that was it. Um, so that's one example. And I think what, what's great about ChatGPT is the iterative process that you can that you can have with it. Uh, you can ask it a question, then you can ask it another question about the response. Then you can say, oh, I don't agree with this completely. Can you take that one out and insert it with something else? So you can have this iterative process back and forth to get at the, the desired result that you have. And ChatGPT is great for that. It's great for um, taking the alternative point of view. If you're looking at creating a, a report or a proposal or whatever it might be, you can say, hey, critique this proposal and give me, you know, five objectives that are five objections that I should be prepared to address. Um, those types of back and forth is, is really a valuable component of, uh, of chat GPT. Now, one tool that you get access to that you have to pay for, uh, and this is sort of the advanced, advanced uh, chat GPT is called code interpreter. And Code Interpreter is a, a phenomenal way. It sounds like it's only going to deal with coding, which it can. It can it can code for you, or you can insert code if you're if you're technically inclined that way. You can insert code, and it will troubleshoot it. Um, but it's also more than that. It's about data. So let me show you what you can do, or some of the examples of what you can do with Code Interpreter. Again, only available on the ChatGPT Plus plan. I just got access to ChatGPT's new code interpreter and everything we do around data analysis, financial modeling, anything in Excel is about to change. Check out how powerful this is. So I have this massive financial model document and with the new code interpreter, I can actually upload a document. So I'm gonna throw in that document and ChatGPT starts analyzing that spreadsheet. Once it knows everything about the spreadsheet, I'm going to ask it, what interesting trend should I be aware of? And just like that, it does a deep analysis of the entire document. This is some powerful analysis, and I can follow up with any other data questions I have. ChatGPT can now handle tasks that would take hours or even days for data analysts to complete. I'll be showing more powerful examples of the code interpreter soon. So that's another um, use case for ChatGPT. If your business has a lot of data, uh, or if you're looking to put together a proposal and you need to do some research and you're wanting to upload and analyze a lot of data, ChatGPT's code interpreter can make really quick work of that. And as you saw, you're just going to speak to it or type out your questions in your common natural language. You don't have to 
devise any formulas. You don't have to learn how to code. You're just going to ask it, well, what's most interesting about this data? What are some five things I need to pay attention to in this data? So it's really phenomenal how I think the AI can be used to look at and summarize and analyze this vast amount of data using Code Interpreter. Now, you'll notice that um, when we talk about data and we talk about Excel, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is Microsoft. And so Microsoft made a tremendous investment in OpenAI. And so they've got a, a ton of money invested. And as part of that investment, they have been able to take OpenAI and ChatGPT and build it into Microsoft Office which is a program that I would say 98% of us probably use every day. Um, and so what we're going to see coming very soon is a chat GPT enabled Microsoft office. So that means every program you have word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, meeting or teams, all of those things are going to be enabled with chat GPT and Microsoft's calling this Microsoft 365 Copilot. So let me show you this video. It's a little bit longer than the others, but I want you to see just the breadth of integration that AI will have in a suite of products that you are already very familiar with. Introducing Microsoft 365 Copilot, your Copilot for work. Copilot combines the power of large language models with your data in the Microsoft Graph and the Microsoft 365 apps to turn your words into the most powerful productivity tool on the planet. It's coming to life in the products millions of people use and rely on every day. Let's see how Copilot can use your customer notes in OneNote as well as another internal document. Copilot quickly creates a first draft. You can turn your Word document into a PowerPoint presentation that you can hone and polish. Let's jump into Copilot in Excel. You start by asking Copilot to analyze the data and give you three key trends. Within seconds, you've got what you need. Triage your inbox, highlighting the most important emails to prioritize. You can draft a reply using data from an Excel file and Copilot will generate a reply for you. The real magic of Copilot happens during a live meeting. You can ask Copilot to summarize what's happened so far. You can see who said what, what points were made. You can follow a meeting and catch up to see what you missed even if you can't attend. I wanna show you an entirely new standalone experience. Business Chat works across all your emails, files, meetings, chats, documents, calendar, and more to turn all your data into knowledge. Now let's imagine you're working on your business strategy. You ask Copilot to pull up quarterly projections and identify related risks. Copilot gives you key data points and flags potential issues. We're deeply committed to listening, learning, and adapting with speed to help create a brighter future of work for everyone with AI. So I think it's going to take something like Microsoft, right, really to be able to tie all of this AI technology in and integrate it into a tool so that you don't have to go and start using a new tool to accomplish a specific business task. Now, one of the things you might be saying, and I've heard a lot of business owners address this, is, wait a minute, I don't want AI to train on my data. I have data that's you know, intellectual property. I have data that is uh, a competitive advantage for my business. If I put this into an, an open AI model and it trains on it, isn't that going to defeat the purpose and make me lose competitive advantage? And so Microsoft has addressed that, as you might expect. Um, by actually letting every business that, that subscribes to Microsoft 365 Copilot operate on their own private large language model. So what that means is, just like you would store documents in uh, OneDrive or Dropbox, you're going to be able to have permissions within your company as to who can access that level of knowledge that's in the AI. In addition, since it's hosted specifically for your business, it's not going out to the larger 
uh, OpenAI model. So let me show you this short video, which kind of explains that a little better than, than I just tried to do. Copilot is not calling the public OpenAI service that powers ChatGPT. Microsoft 365 Copilot will only generate responses based on information that you have explicit permission to access. Copilot uses its own private instances of the large language models. Microsoft 365 Copilot has a powerful orchestration engine. Copilot capabilities are surfaced in and work with Microsoft 365 apps. Microsoft Search is used for information retrieval to feed prompts, like I did in the example before, where information I provided in my prompt was used to help generate an answer. Then, the Microsoft Graph, which has long been foundational to Microsoft 365, includes additional information about the relationships and activities over your organization data. The Copilot system respects per-user access permissions to any content and graph information it retrieves. And that's really the key point, is that it's per-user uh, permission level. So just the same way as on your internal network, you have documents that not every employee in your company can access. Um, there'll be the same permissions-based system inside of Microsoft 365 Copilot so that you as the business owner, for instance, can ask a question and say, hey, show me the top five employees based on how much salary they earn per year and how long they've been with the company. Whereas your frontline staff would not have permission to do that type of request. So there's going to be a robust permission system that's built into uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. Uh, so I think that addresses some of the main concerns and main problems that a lot of businesses would have with doing something like this for their own organization. Now, up until now, you've noticed I've not spoken too much about Google. And um, so we need to get to get Google's take on this, because if you think about Google, um, their their BARD initiative, I think, has been, like I said, a little bit underwhelming. Uh, most people were not very impressed with it. They kind of expected a little more from Google. So let's hear a little bit about what they have planned. Google's next generation language model is so good, they say, they're hesitant to release it to the public. It's being said that Google's Gemini AI is 20 times more powerful than ChatGPT4. Part of the reason for this is that Google has its hands in everything. Not to mention it has way more funding than a company like OpenAI. I mean, think about how vast Google is. It's the largest and most popular search engine. It's the most popular Maps app. It's one of the most popular email domains. Google owns YouTube. It's got Google Shopping. Google has the biggest cloud. Google runs Google Earth. Not to mention every other app and website you can connect through your Google account, which then by proxy has access to it. Nothing can hold a candle to the monster that is Google. They've already had their arm elbow deep in the cookie jar with AI. Presently, it's Google Bard. They had Lambda before that. If you remember the guy that was talking about how he felt Lambda became sentient. Now they have Google Brain, which merged with another company to become Google DeepMind. Google also owns AlphaGo. AlphaGo because Alphabet and then Go the game. If you remember that news story that came out about how the AI beat like a world champion Go player. I mean, Google and its parent company Alphabet is number one top dog of the tech world. Because it's got its hands in everything, because it's got the appropriate amount of funding, this AI is going to be huge. Instead of being called an LLM or a language model, they're calling it a multimodal model. So it's going to use text, images, graphs, maps, everything that Google has access to, to put together in one artificial intelligence. Now the specific ins and outs of what capabilities it's going to have is still being kept under wraps. But one small example is in this image here, you can't exactly see it. We've got a dog on a pier and then this is a guinea pig. So in this example, they're putting in the image to the computer and then asking a question. So this top image, you've got the dog on the pier and it's got the water and the question says, what wants to jump into the water? Answers, dog. This picture, this is a guinea pig eating a carrot. What is eating a carrot? Guinea. Very small example, but illustrating basically that Gemini can beat a captcha. Think of it this way, ChatGPT had to be trained on data and it was only trained on data up to September of 2021. Google Gemini will have access to all of this on everyone. It quite literally has a Google amount of more information than any other language model that exists today. I think we'll call a spade a spade here. Google is definitely big brother. Footnote, how do you feel about the name? As a Gemini, I am on the fence. I know how we can be, so I don't know if that's a bad omen or not. Have a good day. No, oh, sorry about that. I should have stopped it a little while into it. But you get the idea. It's hard to fathom exactly how much data Google already has access to, how much data we give it. 
uh, when you think about not only does our free email account reside there, um, every video we've ever watched um, in, on YouTube is going to be there. Um, they have Google Maps data, as she mentioned. There's there's just so much data that is already in Google's ecosystem on which they can train their model. So it stands to reason that with that much data that is current, more current than ChatGPT, that their model would be more robust. So um, the rumor about this is this is not uh, going to be under wraps for much longer. What we're we're hearing this week is that this could be released next month in October. So while ChatGPT is certainly at the top right now, um, that may not be the case for long. And that's what makes you know giving presentations like this so interesting because you never give the same presentation twice. Um, everything changes in between them. So I did see a question. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer right now in, in the, the chat that someone posted, David posted. Um, David asks, at this time, are there any worthwhile free chatbots to try doing financial analysis? Um, and what is the cost of ChatGPT Plus? So let me take the second part first. ChatGPT Plus account is $20 a month. Um, and so that gets you access to things like the code interpreter uh, on which you can do some financial analysis. It depends on the level of financial analysis that you're wanting to do. Uh, certainly Claude is capable of doing some of that and Claude is free. So you can go and use Claude and, and upload a PDF with uh, financial statements. You can upload multiple PDFs for that matter. And Claude will read those and analyze them. Perplexity also lets you uh, do some financial analysis, but, the, but it's actually going to look to a website to kind of find that um, information that it's going to use as its source and its citation. Um, I think this is another example where what we're going to see are industry specific or task specific um, AI tools that will get really good at performing financial analysis. And I know several of the large um, financial companies are looking at you know ways to integrate this into their uh, their models. And so I think that's something that we can we can anticipate and safely say is is going to happen, but uh, but right now you are a little bit limited in terms of which free ones are worthwhile to try. But I would certainly try with Claude. Um, and yeah, we got another question here from Dinesh. Uh, can you talk more about the code interpreter? How can we use upload sheets for analysis? It's very simple. Um, you do have to have the uh, ChatGPT plus plan. And so the $20 a month, and once you enable that plugin, um, you just upload a spreadsheet and then you say, hey, tell me what's in this spreadsheet. Um, and you can interact with it on, again, just that natural language basis. So if you have a, a large amount of data, it obviously makes a lot more sense to let ChatGPT do that level of analysis because it would otherwise take you maybe hours or potentially days, depending on the level of analysis you need. So it's really um, amazing to see when you throw some big data at it and let it go and, and come back with, with um, some findings. Uh, but it's one of those things that I think, again, depending on your business, it can really revolutionize how you look at, at analyzing your data. But yeah, Code Interpreter is phenomenal. And just imagine once Microsoft gets Copilot released, that's going to be built into Excel. So again, that's just around the corner as well. So you may not even need Code Interpreter uh, once Microsoft uh, 365 Copilot is released. So we've talked a lot about the AI platforms and the AI large language models. Now we're going to look at some specific other apps that are available um, that might have a, a really good application for business uses. So again, marketing is one of those areas where AI and chat GPT, um, it just excels. And so this is a great tool that I think several people would love to see. So let's take a look at my marquee. New AI tools, my marquee. Fire your social media agency. I've been waiting for a tool like this forever. This tool can make an entire month's worth of social media content in minutes, images, and text. No more excuses for businesses to ignore social media. Let's check it out. Set up the post type you want to make. This tool works really well for authors, but it can also do other products. Now select the style, tons to choose from. I picked memes. Fill out some basic information. I run an affiliate offer for a herbal remedy book, so I just pasted in some text from the website. Bam, social media posts. It will even post them to social. It also has a Tinder style rating system, which is hilarious but also a good way of doing it. You could even use this tool to make a social media agency if you want to make some money. I've been working with businesses to give you guys deals when signing up. They hooked me up with a promo code. Use this if you want to purchase. If you enjoy the video, like and follow for more AI tools, guides, and news.
So that's a great example of how my marquee is probably using a chat GPT somewhere on the back end matched up with an image generation tool on the other side. And so the content matches up with an image gen, and then it comes together to create social media post so that you can automate it using, again, more than one tool. But what's nice is they've wrapped that up for you so that you just have to interact with their platform in order to create that type of content. So a great use case, again, you know, how who wouldn't want to go ahead and get, you know, their, their social media content for the month planned uh, well in advance. So now when we look at another example, it's, it's all, often a pain point for businesses, which is creating a website or redesigning a website. So there are, as you might imagine, AI website generators. So let's take a look at this one. Website designers are dead. If you need quick and affordable website design, let's look at the top five AI website generators and which one is right for you. Let's go. Number five, card.co. I like this one as it taps onto this fast one page website concept with a modern style, which is great for personal brands, social media profile links, and you can collect user info with the form. Best of all, it's free. Number four, 10web.io. These guys generate your website in seconds. Their websites are a little more classic, great for e-com brands, education and real estate, and are easily connected to WordPress. So if you're looking for something fast, safe, and timeless, this one is for you. Plans start from $10 a month. Number three, framer.io. This AI generates fast sites from a simple prompt. They have clear, minimalist, and modern styles, but are highly customizable and advanced. They would fit for digital product teams, tech freelancers, and web app designers. They do have a free plan among paid ones starting at $5 per month. Number two, durable.co. They ask three simple questions to generate the best website for you. Their sites are simple, modern, and classic, great for restaurants, hotels, and service providers. You can generate for free and pay for hosting that's starting at $12 a month. Number one, jimdo.com. The website styles are simple and straightforward. Jimdo also offers features like online store integration and booking systems, great for e-commerce and hospitality. They have free and paid plans starting at $9 a month. Now, I don't want to mislead anyone, so I've tested a couple of those. The Durable.co, for instance, is, is one that's gaining a lot of popularity right now. I think he listed it as the number two in his rankings. But just keep in mind, this is going to give you a starting point. It's not probably going to end up being the be-all, end-all, final version of your website. But if you can create it in 30 seconds or a minute, um, it's a pretty good investment of your time to see exactly what it could produce for, for your business's website, especially if you don't have one. So website generators, I don't agree with the, the opening comment there about website designers are dead. Definitely not. I think they'll find ways to integrate AI into their business and their process, uh, just as all businesses will. But I think it is a, a great uh, starting point, a great idea generator to help you figure out what type of website do you need. Or if you're at the concept stage and you just want to put together, okay, this is something we're going to launch. Let's get something up and, and, and launched very quickly for a very small amount of money. That's a great way to do it. Now, along the same lines of, of website design and, and marketing, we have, and this I think is another great example of sort of at the concept stage. If your business is very early on and you're looking to sort of build out the concept, you're wanting to get some maybe outside investors, get some other partners on board. This is a way you can create a brand in AI uh, in this example, and it says in just over a minute. So let's take a look. We're going to create a coffee brand in just over one minute using AI. Here we go. The first step is to head on over to Midjourney. I typed in this prompt, coffee branding with flat lay with teal and orange tones. And this is what I got. Everything looks pretty good, but I like the one on the bottom right. I think it gives us the most diversity. So I upscaled it in Midjourney. There's the final image. Now I want to create a logo in Midjourney as well. So I typed this in. Modern swirl logo, simple vector shape, vector SVG. And here we go. It's creating a logo for us. I like the one on the bottom right, so I'm going to use that one for my logo. It even looks like it has a little J in there. So I'm going to head on over to ChatGPT and ask it to give me 25 names for my coffee brand. I see one I like already, Java Jewels. Next, I'm going to head into Photoshop and get rid of the text that's on the packaging that Midjourney gave me. I'm just going to use the generative fill feature to remove all that text, and it's gone. And then I'm going to go in and paste in all the logos that I made into Photoshop so I can get my packaging ready. And look at that, everything's in. We just did it in just over a minute. And don't forget, if you love AI, I'm the guy.
So again, just the ability to create something simple, right? This is not going to be um, a very, uh, I can't go to the printer with this necessarily, but if I'm at the concept stage and I want to put together a branding and give an idea of a visual of what my brand will look like, it's a great way to do it. Now, we've not talked much about mid-journey or some of the other text to image generators, uh, but there's several out there. Mid-journey is probably the most well-known. Um, there's others like ideogram that you can play around with. The purpose of this uh, presentation, though, is really more about content and creating text and, and some other things as opposed to images and graphics. So I've kind of stayed away from some of those because we can actually, we could spend a whole another hour just looking on, on ways to generate that kind of thing. But I think this is another great example of an easy way to actually uh, build a brand using AI in a very short amount of time. And just with a little basic, basic knowledge and, and basic tools that you're probably already using. Now, this one's a little bit more advanced. This is a great example, though, of how you can use AI and automation together um, using a program called Zapier. I don't know if anybody's heard from of Zapier. Zapier's been around a while. It was a great little tool that, that allowed you to connect one system to another. Um, and so you could take data from one and plug it into another system. Um, you could take an email and send it to Slack or, or vice versa. And so what he is sort of walking us through here is a way that a business could design a new customer support function using AI. Um, well, I don't want to go into it. I'll just let him describe it. To show you how to use AI to create a fully automated customer support bot for your business. We're going to be using JotForm, OpenAI, Synthesia, and Gmail for this workflow. Although it can't solve complex problems for your customers, it's a very interesting concept I recommend all of you understand. First, we're going to create a customer support form in something like JotForm or Google Forms, asking for information about the customer and then whatever problem they're experiencing. As soon as that support form is submitted, it's going to automatically send a prompt to OpenAI. Your prompt to be specific about what your business is and what problems your customers might need help with and then put the values and the answers from the form into that prompt in a Zapier workflow and then it will trigger every single time. Next, we're going to use something like Synthesia. This is an AI bot that can speak any text. It has an API available where we can fire off the answer from ChatGPT into the transcription for here and she'll speak it uh, every single response automatically through Zapier. And so after the answers are sent to ChatGPT, it then sends the uh, ChatGPT response to Synthesia and you can imagine next we're going to be sending a Gmail back to the customer. Anytime that you get a new customer support request, ChatGPT is automatically giving you a response. Instead of just emailing it back, we're then sending it to Synthesia to make a highly personalized custom video automatically, usually something that would take multiple minutes to do, and then firing it back in that personalized email right below. That's super cool. Like I said, this isn't gonna solve pretty much all of your problems for your customers, but it's a very interesting concept. Do what you want with this and just understanding this overall is super valuable. If you're interested in work. So again, as he mentioned, right, the caveat is not gonna solve every problem for all of your customers. And certainly it needs what we call a human in the loop. There needs to be a human here checking some of the responses before that actually triggers the, the video or before it triggers the email. But at its very basic, it was very, uh, it's very innovative way to handle it. A support form on your website takes the information. You use Zapier to send that over to ChatGPT. ChatGPT provides a response to the question or the problem. It sends that information to Synthesia where a video is created. Um, and then the video gets emailed to the customer. So it's a really interesting way of how you can use these AI tools that might be on different platforms, how you can sort of tie them all together into a cohesive, you know, uh, uh, function that basically takes you from A to Z rather than having to go to different platforms and do it manually. So again, we're not quite there yet. I think uh, Zapier is a great way to do this though. Um, but again, it requires a little bit more patience and a little bit more uh, specificity in terms of the use case. You have to be real specific about how you're going to use this. Um, so, but anyway, interesting concept for sure. Now, this one, again, kind of stays in the realm of text to video. Um, so I'm going to try to set this up properly. This is an AI translation service, which we're going to see become much more prevalent in, again, every, every tool that we use. It's not just going to be a, a freestanding tool. Um, but this is using HeyGen, which is a, an AI platform that's text to video. And one of the powerful things about HeyGen is the ability for it to uh, take your 
English transcription and convert it to Spanish or Italian or German, whatever. And so in this example, what you're going to see is how you can take a recorded video and actually make it look like and sound like you are speaking another language. Here's, here's a clip with, here's me in English, and then I'll play a little in English and a little in Italian. So we've heard from a number of clients that modular content is important to them. Get Clienti dicono che il contenuto modulare è importante. More efficient with how we create content and how we leverage content. Uh, behind me, you see these little green boxes. Um, that's how we think about stories at Storyvine. We break stories down into little atoms. Rendendo più efficiente la creazione dei contenuti. Dietro di me, vedi queste piccole scatole verdi? Così pensiamo alle storie. A Storyvine, scomponiamo le storie in atomi. Good Lord! <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of had the same uh, same reaction, I think. So, again, what he did there is he already had a video of him speaking in English, and he took that video to Hey Jen, uploaded it to Video Translate, and chose Italian. Now, if you were paying real close attention to the video, a couple of things you noticed. Number one, sounded like his voice, I think, very close. Number two, still had uh, a tone and, and a, a mannerisms in terms of the, the inflection of the voice, you know, was not robotic at all. But the third thing you might have noticed if you're paying real close attention is that when his hand went in front of his face, you might have saw this superimposed lips or mouth on top of where his lips or mouth should have been. And so that is because not only are they doing the translation and actually speaking it in Italian, but the AI is also creating a small mouth to go over top of the speaker so that the lips move in the way that they should for that when speaking that language. So it doesn't look like a badly dubbed movie, right? It looks natural and sounds natural. Um, I think this service is around $60 a month for the basic level. And if you have if you've got a lot of uses for it, you're probably going to need to subscribe to a higher plan. But just a, a phenomenal, I think, example of how we're going to see content that may have been, you know, initially prepared in, a, in another language be accessible to a much larger audience um, by by businesses who want to uh, to customize it. So again, great example, I think, of um, of again how this translation service and how AI makes all that uh, very possible. Now, while we're in the text to speech generator category, um, I'll show you a couple of these. Um, this is where it starts to get scary when you talk about text to speech, text to image, text to video. Uh, because you start to see ways in which um, this can be misused, right? And so you can have pictures of people that, you know, weren't at a certain place, but it looks like they were. Um, you can have videos of, of people, you know, that are not authentic. And so this is a challenge that I will say can only be combated and dealt with through more technology. So a lot of people are saying, well, we have to take this away. Number one, the genie's not going back in the bottle, folks. It's 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 already out. It's not going back in. But the only way to deal with this is with more technology to try to detect and or prevent some of these uh, things from being misused. So text to speech, though, is really cool. Let's say you want to create a video, but you don't want to be on the video. You just want it to be narrated. Maybe you're going to do an audio book and you want it to be narrated. Um, Here's a list of these text-to-speech generators. The first one is by far the best. I recommend you check them out, but uh, I'll let you watch this. Top AI text-to-speech generators. AI voice is getting very good. Here are four of the best text-to-speech generators, two paid and two free. Number one, 11 Labs. Currently the best in the industry, paid and quite expensive. Here's an example. If you want a voice like this, 11 Labs can do it. Number two, Verbatic. I would say second overall, a bit more robotic. Here's an example. Here is an example of robotic text to speech. Number three, Tortoise TTS. Great quality and free. I did a guide on installing it. Check it out. Here's an example. Once you have the first token, you want to predict the second token given the input and the first token using multi head attention. Number four, Bark TTS. Second best. It has some effects you can add to the voice. Here's the example. The model is called Bark, like Clifford the Big Red Dog. I've done reviews on all of these tools. Check them out. Like and follow for more AI tools, guides, and news.
Now you noticed on this example, um, you know, 11 labs is the one that, that has been around the longest. Um, it's, uh, it is a little bit expensive. I mean, for what you're getting and, and for what you're having to, to pay, uh, but they do have a monthly plan. You can start for free and, and play around with it. Um, the one example we gave of the tortoise model, that one actually requires you to install it on your computer. So you're going to be running that software on your computer, which is why it's free. So we're going to see more of that as well. Some open source, which is a concept that's been around in software development for a long time. We're going to see some open source tools gain more notoriety and more prevalence because people are saying, okay, well, we can make this open source and not, uh, not charge for it, not commercialize it, but people can run it on their own. So there's a, uh, I don't know if, if many of you are Mac users, there's a great uh, Mac uh, AI tool called Rewind. And what Rewind does is it captures everything that happens on your computer. Everything that you see on your screen, it captures. And it keeps a running log of everything you've seen. Every message, if you're on a website, you're scrolling down, it's like just reading it as it goes. And then you can go back and ask it questions and say, hey, I remember visiting this website where they talked about this open source uh, text-to-speech generator. What was the name of that text-to-speech generator? And it will come back and say, oh yeah, on September 12th, you visited this website at 2.20 p.m. And here it is. And so some of those things that run locally on your device, we're going to see those types of models that run locally on your phone. They're going to become so efficient that they don't need all of these really fancy GPUs like what's happening right now. Um, anybody have NVIDIA stock? You, you've seen the right, why NVIDIA is so so, uh, so expensive right now. Um, they're not going to need that in the future. They're going to become more efficient and they're going to be able to run on mobile devices as well as on your laptop or desktop. So a lot to come in, in the way of text-to-speech generators. Um, this example is kind of a, another way of how a coffee shop is using AI. Um, and the coffee shop, what they're doing here is they're just, you know, using their surveillance video to track customers on the left, how long are customers in the shop, and employees on the right, how many cups have been served. Um, you'll notice Anna's doing great. She's at 20 cups, but poor, poor Olga, she's just at three cups. Something's going on with Olga. She's not very, not very productive today. But this type of overlay of, uh, of AI tools on top of something as simple as a surveillance camera um, is going to become very commonplace as well. Uh, so it's another example of, again, how, you know, uh, a coffee shop could, could implement a tool on, on which it, uh, uh, you know, overlays on top of their surveillance footage. So pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to try to get through a couple more things because I know we're bumping up against the top of the hour. Um, keep in mind, we are all, just because you're here in this presentation, you are an early adopter. Uh, don't feel too bad. Most people are not going to learn AI. And I'm saying that as somebody who basically just teaches people about AI right now. The reality is most people aren't going to learn it until we're further along on the adoption curve. Yes, tons of people tried ChatGPT, but then a lot of people have never logged in again. So if you're someone who's using ChatGPT even a few times a day, pause for a minute and realize and appreciate that you are an extremely early adopter. And then if you get frustrated with how complicated some of the stuff can become, or how janky some of the tools are that they don't work fully yet. Remember that that's the price you pay for being an early adopter, but you're also going to get a lot of the upside. So there you have it. You're an early adopter. You've, you've got to be familiar with the territory. There's some things that just aren't going to work right. Um, so to kind of wrap things up here, I'll send, spend the next few slides here talking about where do you really start? If this is you know something you're wanting to get into, where do you start? This is a model that, that Rachel produced that I think is applicable here. Um, a lot of us would want to jump straight to implementation. Let's go ahead. Let's build a chat bot. Let's build this automation for customer support. Let's uh, let's come up with some workflows. And while you can learn that way, for sure, I think with this, with AI in particular, it's important to make sure we have our foundation set. It's important we understand the fundamentals. We know how this stuff is working so that we know where it can potentially go wrong. We also need to talk about, at some point, ethics and governance. How are you going to control this AI model to make sure that it's giving the answers that you need it to give? So there's a lot of ways you can learn about AI. If you'll notice, every video that I shared in today's presentation was actually taken from TikTok. TikTok has been a wealth of knowledge about AI. And you may say, what's a 50-year-old guy doing on TikTok? Well, 
I'm learning about AI. I don't know what other 50 year olds are doing about it, but the TikTok has been phenomenal for this. There's a lot of influencers who every day are updating the latest AI news and tips and tricks. It's a great way to do it. If you want to take an actual course, there's several free ones that Google has actually launched. If you go to Google and just type in um, on the Google search, just type in AI course free Google, it'll come to it. So I'm going to skip this video just so in the interest of time. But once you get that foundation, once you kind of understand the basics of how this is working, that's when you can quickly start to experiment with AI and start to come up with ways in which chat GPT, maybe start there with just that one tool, as we heard at the beginning. Don't feel like you have to start with 10 tools. Just start with one. Use chat, GT, chat GPT to help you with your marketing campaigns, with your email newsletters, with SEO content for your website. SOPs, who, who loves writing standard operating procedures, right? No one, but ChatGPT is pretty good at it. So you can give it those types of tasks, job descriptions, um, documentation of processes in your business, have it help you with customer service, analyzing your company data, just some simple things you can experiment with before you move into the next phase. Um, the whole title of this you know, presentation was the ROI of AI. And so it's really a, an equation that can't effectively be answered because we need to know some more variables. We need to know how much money are you putting into your AI investment and then to be able to measure what the effective return would be. But a couple of studies recently have suggested that some companies are achieving ROIs of 40 to 60% on their AI investments. Accenture estimates that basically AI could double economic growth rates by 2035 by changing the nature of work. Um, so there's a lot of data that supports just how productive AI can make us as individuals and also how uh, productive and efficient your business can become as well if you if you effectively implement it. So again, as I'm wrapping up, a couple of things I recommend, start playing with AI. Um, Bing is free, Bard is free, Claude is free. Uh, I recommend Claude out of those. Perplexity also is free. ChatGPT has a free account, but you'll you'll really notice a difference if you pay the $20 a month and go to ChatGPT with uh, GPT-4. Microsoft Copilot is coming soon. It will be an add-on, as you can imagine, to your Microsoft Office subscription. So it's going to be $30 per user per month to get access to Copilot. So it's not going to be for everyone, but for those who really see how this can you know, completely transform their business, it's going to be, I think, money well spent. Then after you have that foundational knowledge, after you start playing with AI a little bit, you can start to translate more of your work into these frameworks and processes that you can get AI to do for you. So again, not just about creating content, email newsletters, and social media. It can do a lot more than that, but those are some of the, the low-hanging fruit. Again, it's not about using AI for everything. It's about using AI and ChatGPT for the right things. So to kind of uh, summarize everything in context of the ROI discussion, ROI isn't just about dollars and cents. It's the symphony of productivity, innovation, and foresight for small businesses. AI is the maestro orchestrating a future where efficiency meets exponential growth. And yes, that's what ChatGPT said when I asked it. Um, so there we have it, folks. Um, I do apologize for going slightly over. I appreciate you all's attention. You will get a copy of these slides um, along with the videos that are embedded. So you can go back and watch those. The slides also have a link to the TikTok profile of the, the user who created that content. Uh, so I'm not taking credit for their work. But uh, you can also go check them out. So, um, Dave, there we have it. It's Thank a lot you, to Kevin. cover. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, Dwayne, I uh, just want to tell you that Dwayne said, Thank you, Kevin. This has been one of the best SBDC webinars I have ever attended. You took three oh, wow. pages of three pages of notes and oh, gosh. back and watch several times and pick up points you missed. Very and, good. Thank you for that, Dave. He also said he, did, he did not write this with chat GPT. So. <laughs> I've told everybody in the office, if they get an email me in the future, just assume that chat GPT had a, a large <laughs> hand in writing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Dwayne also said, just as another comment, uh, now that almost everyone has access to AI for social media, won't we all be bombarded with targeted ads and useless posts on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn? Then I guess we will need AI to wade through all the, the excess. Oh, and that's, there's a lot of truth there. Uh, anybody remember the movie uh, Minority Report, the Tom Cruise movie? 
yeah. whereas he was walking through, it would sort of recognize him and speak to him directly. You know, the ads were customized to that level. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of attention this week, Google Chrome just said the same thing. Hey, we're going to use the information we know about you to customize our ads even more. Um, so you have to opt out if you don't want that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the customization and personalized ads are definitely going to increase. Um, but maybe it'll be better than, you know, the ads that, that are completely not relevant and, and, you know, have no interest in, but, um, but yeah, I think you're, I think it's a good point. You are going to see a lot of content generated, but for small businesses, I would say you've still got opportunity right now because very few people are, are really engaged in this at the level that we're talking about. So yeah. it's a great way for you to kind of have first mover advantage to produce some of this content that really gets in front of the right people. Yeah, that that is key. That is key to to, to get ahead of the game. Uh, Kristen wants to know if you have a favorite uh, text to speech AI program. You know, that's a that's a good question, Kristen. I think the Eleven Labs is from all that I've seen, and I I, I don't pay for this uh, program, so I've only been using the the free version. The Eleven Labs is the one that that when I see examples of things that have been done through that it has been just, you know, blows you away uh, because you can create like multiple uh, voices in inside the program and you can have, you know, multiple ones to do, to use for specific projects. Um, so it, again, kind of scary in, in terms of how, and I think everyone's probably seen if you've got, you know, kids that are teenager, preteen, You've seen these AI generated songs that are coming out, you know, mm -hmm. a AI Drake released an album, had nothing to do with Drake, but, you know, somebody used his voice and cloned it to make an album. Um, there've been other artists that said, yeah, I'm fine with whoever wants to do that. We're just going <laughs> to split the money. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David says, thank you. My 60 year old brain is fried. No, seriously. Enjoy and look forward to promoting our business with AI. That's great. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this, this has been great, Kevin. And a couple other comments about the recording. Yeah, we will uh, send out a recording to everyone and this slides as well. Uh, watches off and, and then, uh, check our channel on YouTube also, cause we post everything we do there and you can always watch, uh, everything over and over again. So that's, um, other than TikTok, you, YouTube is my other university that I go to all the time as well. There you <laughs> so, go. That's right. Um, looks like that's about all we have here today. So, uh, Kevin, thank you so much. This has been spectacular. This is so much fun and you, uh, I'm really excited about the things we can do. So thanks for sharing. My pleasure again. Appreciate, uh, the opportunity to share with you again. You get me started talking about it. It's hard to make me stop, but, uh, <laughs> uh yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you all and, uh, always good to see you, Dave. Yep. Janet, thanks for everything you do. Good yes, to see thank you, you Janet. Yes. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, friends. Have a good Tuesday, and we'll see you next week on another Toolkit Tuesday. Goodbye.